comes up. So that now I can hit F9 as soon as the next bit comes up. Okay, boom. Okay. Hey guys, it's Ben though, and I'm starting off another LP. Because you guys probably couldn't get enough of this. We'll just watch this intro while I eat some chocolate. Mm -hmm. So as you can tell, Einstein here is building an aeroplane. <laughs> as I walk to a different section of the world, as I turn up the audio a bit, what the heck is this? Is this what Sonic was foretelling us about? Dun dun dun! Strange cinematography at the end here, just because you can see his horns. Anyway, hey guys, welcome to a new RP. We're going to be playing Croc 2. So firstly, I'm going to input my three-letter name. You know, I'm going to put it next to my safe, next to my test. And we're just going to watch this opening cutscene. Just to introduce us to this game. Anyway. I better stop eating the chocolate and actually start talking. So anyway, yeah, I just wanted to play this game as a continuation of the Croc franchise, aka the two games in it. Here it is, here it is, here he goes. Doh. <laughs> Such a weird beginning, isn't it? Oh, someone drinks wine in this world. He also manages to pull out the piece of paper without actually taking the bottle out of the sand. <laughs> and stop reminding me phone that I have to upload a video. I'll do that later. <laughs> anyway. So anyway, what the story is in this game is that Croc finds a letter from his mother that tells them that the parents are on that island there. So anyway, how do you get over there? You just use a... catapult. Or a seesaw. I remember playing this on such a laggy computer back in Windows 2000. Oh gosh. Oh by the way, there's no dialogue. Or well, there's no voice acting. There originally was voice acting, but... You know, no voice, no voice acting. They, um, sorry, uh, they originally had voice acting, but they decided to spice it up for comedic effect. Also, I'm not too sure if it's still the same person who's doing all the voices. Definitely, they did redo all the sounds, but they did, they didn't get rid of any. For example. So they re-recorded all those sounds. Now anyway, first of th first thing, I'm gonna go into my control method and hit type 2. If you're playing on the PlayStation version, which is the, actually the only other version of this game there, um, um, hold on, uh, inventory, yeah, all those settings are there, which is good. If you're playing, yeah, that's what I meant, change it back to the tank controls, because people criticized the first game because it had bad controls, and I criticized this game because it's got bad controls. I didn't criticize the tank controls. I criticized the disc. Um. Ooh. What is this? The magic eye zoomers. Anyway, I should probably time this as well. Um. But anyway, yeah. So we got the magic eye zoomers, which allows us to press W and allows us to do this. And I don't know if we can zoom in. It also kind of keeps locking into place. But anyway, yeah. Um. 
I criticize the controls of this game because first of all it defaults to the type 2 which I'll just demonstrate here. As you can see I'm holding down left and the problem is that the camera is still kind of tailored to the tank controls so while he does move down, he doesn't move down towards the camera, the camera will start shifting around so that's why I think these controls don't really work too well. The PlayStation version you can only really use those controls, but on the PC you can switch to the tank controls which is actually kind of beneficial to this game. Anyway, so what this game works on is a hub based system where all the levels are, are in separate areas. For some odd reason, I, I was also trying to play this on the PlayStation version, that beginning area is moved over here and this door is now over on that, in that wall. It's kind of strange, I don't know why, but okay. The other thing, the only other major difference between this version and the PlayStation version is not the shop, that's just a new feature, but shameless advertising. I like his voice though. Anyway, shameless advertising right here. Gummy savers. Ooh, Wrigley's rolling it. So anyway, yeah, um, so you may be going, oh my gosh, what the heck is going on? What happened from the last game? Well, basically, there were a few things, and I'm just gonna leave the shop for a moment. Um, so yeah, there's a hub-based system. That The first level was back there. Um, I'll have some foreboding dialogue from this guy. Swap meet Pete. Watch over all the gobbos. He real clever and a nice guy too. And I believe does he say something else? Gobbo always throw fish back, but not before Gobbo give them kiss. We the only gobbos in world. World also flat like pancake. No croc not seen big squid. Squid like ginger soda too. So yeah. The dialogue is... stuff. Anyway, I'll be talking to the guys outside the front of each level. Um as well, once we, once we get to the level. There's just a few guys that you can talk to annoy you like mad like this guy, because one, you can't speed up his dialogue. Anyway, so he says you can't jump either. Here's, here's a new cool feature. Basically, you've got the ground pound and all, but here's a cool new feature. If you tap space when you hit the ground from ground pound, so you do a ground pound and you hit space. I failed. I failed. There you go. That. That is a technique which you'll need to know when you play this game. What's your prize? Money! That's actually kind of useful because each stage now, remember the crystals from the from the past game? In this game, every stage has a hundred crystals, okay? And the crystals are used as a currency in order to buy things. Anyway, just talk to this guy and do all this stuff. Because he will knock a heart pot off the tree. Um, I don't... I don't know what he's saying there, but basically, basically the heart pot is a heart container, so to speak, and that gets you to realize that there's something weird with the heart system. There's a, there's a bunch of different uh, new things. First of all, yeah, the crystals are currency now, so you actually kind of want to collect them. Or, you can do my technique, and that's go over to this stage. I believe there's, yeah, there's five stages in total, and there's two bosses in the mix of it. And then there's a, there's a disc lag. I'm playing this on the pure PC version, which somehow has a 1080p option. But anyway, this is what I do to shamelessly get the money. Get money. I'm only going to do this five times. Anyway, Dantini's having boat race. Want gobos to race, but gobos always lose. Croc not lose, so jump and boat to start. And the other thing is that, uh, health, instead of losing all the, all the crystals you have on hand, instead you just lose a heart, and you'll find hearts throughout the levels. And you also get heart containers. You can buy them from the store, but you can find quite a few of them lying around, and it maxes at 9, so for the most part you'll find them. You only really need to buy one of them or even zero. It's not too difficult this game. Anyway, another thing you may notice is that instead of collecting gobos, you're collecting colored gems only now. And that's, yeah. You also may be wondering why the heck are we in a boat? Well, that's just because this is a fancy stage. The other four stages are quite regular. Um, all have quite varying designs, so that's one thing I love about this game is that it doesn't. 
it doesn't care about the... It doesn't have as strict of a formula, so for the most part they can pull whatever they want. Uh, but anyway, yeah, this is the boat riding game, I just want to talk about this now. This is pretty much one of the only... This is the easiest stage of the game, and it's also one of the easiest ones to get 100 crystals on, because you get 100 crystals if you come first. Basically like that. All the other stages, you've got to hunt down all 100 crystals on the stage, and it actually gets kind of difficult in some of the later stages. In this stage, it's really easy, first of all, to get all five golden crystals. And also, it's easy to win, so you get 100 crystals easy, and it's also easy to get golden gobba, which is a new thing. Instead of having just to collect the last gobba at the end of the stage, most of the stages have a special golden gobba section. But once you collect all the crystals, you get the golden gobbo, and then will walk you to a, sec to a separate section of that stage, and that will be really tricky. And if you die, then no golden gobbo, you gotta play the stage again and get all the crystals, and then succeed at that challenge. I said most stages, because there's like two stages in the game, and this is one of them, where you don't get a golden gobbo challenge, you just gotta win. So anyway, yeah, I'll be playing this stage like four times off screen. Um, yeah, four more times off screen, just because it's best to grind the crystals, because you're going to need to buy items in the store in order, in order to the music lag. You're going to need to buy crystals, or buy objects from the store in order to unlock segments, sections of of stages, either to get coloured crystals, which you're really going to need, or just regular crystals, which is kind of pointless, and it happens quite a few times. Um, in fact, you don't need... No, I'll, I'll get them, because I'll, I'll try to show off and try and get all 100 crystals. In that case, I'm going to need a bunch of items. How can I be of assistance? First of all, you're going to want to buy... Uh, one of these. Basically, these are just different types of cheap advertising. Basically, that's they'll do a simple jump. Well, this one does a high jump, and this one does a long jump. You can basically replace. You can basically buy these max ones instead of having to buy each of them separately. Because there's just a little marker on the ground where you place them normally, and you can place any one of these, and they'll. Pretty much, if you have the better one, then you can do it, but the cheaper. So this one's special though, because you can't, you can only use it by yourself. Anyway, so I'll buy this. My biggest problem with this is that besides the um, besides getting um, uh, getting. Wait, anyway, can can this guy give me hundred more crystals, or, or is he just gonna? Nah, he's not gonna give me a hundred more crystals, oh well. Um... Yeah, but besides, um... The problem with the item system is that it's really forced, so to speak. You pretty much don't have to figure it out, you just gotta use it, pretty much. So anyway, I like this stage, because one, it also shows a bit of the variety of the game, and also, you don't need to buy anything in order to get the golden bubble. Or I think you need one. I think you need... I'm not, no, no, I don't think you need any. There are, there are a couple of items that you can get in... Uh, that you can use in the stage in order to get more crystals and hearts. So anyway, what this gobba does is he jumps into the backpack, and now he's... Not an item yet. You still gotta go into the stage before he becomes an item! Which is only in this stage. And you also may notice that the enemies look a bit funny now, and that's just because they're big, mean, nasty dantinis. Um, so as you can tell, there's, there's quite a fair amount of differences in the gameplay. The game is a lot less linear now. You'll notice that. And that's, that's a bit of a plus for the game. Um... By the way, I'm, this isn't a pirated disc, this is an actual disc, although I don't know where the front of the game went. I don't think I ever had the front of the game, so I think I bought it on eBay back in 2000. <laughs> so anyway, all you gotta do is you gotta select the gobbo and throw him. You don't, you don't actually throw him, it just does this. And then the camera kind of goes, oh gosh. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I believe in this stage you, you can get all five crystals without actually needing to get any items, so if you're gonna wanna 
save on crystals and yeah sure. Also, with the heart system, I may want to know, instead of being like Sonic X-esque where you'll die if you don't hold any crystals, in this game it's more so if you take a hit, that's one heart. And also if you hit like spikes or whatever, pits and stuff, you'll only lose one heart and then you'll get warped back up. Okay, which is rather nice of them. Anyway, jump down here, and this is your cue to use a golden, a golden gobbo, no, a clockwork gobbo. Basically, what it does is that it goes zooming straight ahead, and you want to try and pick up everything in its way, because it'll go to just a separate section. Can we get that heart? Can we get it? Yeah, except we can't get it because we're on full health anyway. Yeah. Now, I picked up like 10 crystals at. This thing costs 50. Whee! For the most part, you don't know which ones are gonna give you the golden crystal, uh, colored crystals and which ones aren't. So, you're gonna have to kind of go on a hunch. Now, this is a bit of a time taking exercise. Um, but yeah, also, you can climb. It's, a, it's a, quite a lot faster and smoother from the previous game, but. In, in a, um, oh, and that gong over there, that's actually a, a checkpoint marker. I, I always miss that in this stage. There's a second one later, but... I'm not gonna need it. Also, look how good they finish those ropes there. <laughs> yeah. You can't even see how, how much effort they put into this game. <laughs> uh, um... Yeah, this bit of climbing isn't worth it. Isn't worth it. Um, so yeah, I'll try to get all the crystals, but there will be times where you'll try to use your clockwork gobos and you'll just kind of fail, you know. By the way, that heart up there is kind of hinting at something. That there may be something collectible. Oh, what is that? Is that a platform over there? Yeah. I always miss this one, but I remember now. Okay. That lag jump of yours, cool. It's my disk drive just not liking the game. There you go, got up there. Oof. My disk drive doesn't entirely like the game, I don't know why. Um, gonna wanna use one of these. Okay, the same guy. And then we're just gonna kinda. We're kind of gonna come come back to the spot. So anyway, yeah, there's a lot more variety in this game, and I think that'll be a bit of a better aspect. Because then, you know, one, you can really identify the stages. Because this one is the one with the guy... Oh, this, this stage is the one with the bouncy dude. This one is... The next stage is... That I'm gonna do is gonna be the one which looks like this, but it's not really. Oh, here's one nice secret. You can sequence break if you really want to by bouncing off that crate. But I believe, yeah, there is. You're gonna want to go in here because there's a colored crystal. Oh, and these the breaking platforms, they look kind of funny in this game. Oh, these boxes will also be the bane of your existence. Um, in the later stage. Right now, they're okay, but in the later stage. Anyway, throw them out there. How many have we got? Three. There was one above, and I believe there's one right there. But yeah, you know, there's a lot more, there's a fair amount of difference between this game and the previous game. And that's one thing I like, it's a sequel that actually does new things, thank you every single game made nowadays, New Super Mario Bros. 2, which is sitting on my desk and I've played only up to World 3, but I can tell you that there's not much new. It's fun, it's kind of difficult, but it's not painstakingly difficult, especially considering how many lives they're, they're handing out. I was thinking they would, considering how many coins they give out in New Super Mario Bros. 2, I was thinking, oh, they changed life. Uh, how many coins were required for life? Would they change it to a thousand? Nope, it's still a hundred and get coins like hotcakes. Break that. Anyway, so yeah. Um, what else is on my desk? I've got Pokemon Conquest, I haven't really played much of that, and I've also got Boom Street, which I've played quite a bit of that. 
or Fortune Street for you Americans. I, I believe it's called Fortune Street, pretty much it's supposed to be called that. I had never played it, but it's so much fun. Anyway, yeah, this is what I mean. You can put pretty much anything on the, on the here, but... You're gonna need a green one in order to get up here. And that's the thing. Five crystals, and... So, uh, oh, by the way, if you get, I believe if you get 50 crystals on the stage, you instantly get one heart, and then if you get all, and then if you get all of them, there you go, that's five crystals, but if you get all, all the, um, all the crystals on the stage, then you instantly fill your heart. Anyway, yeah, so remember, don't die, because otherwise you back out. It's... I believe that mine stage would probably be the worst one of them. Yeah! And then we get teleported right outside. Uh, yeah, I believe it's only really the mine card stage. The mine card stage. You know, just kill them, get the thing, and there's also a heart here. Anyway, swap the key. Gong will warp you back outside where you can. Bask in the glory. Pickled onion jelly. Uh, no thanks. So anyway, yeah. Uh, um, bar doors and stuff. Hopefully in the next part we'll be able to clear the next three stages and then maybe clear the whole world. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be 100 percenting this. Uh, maybe not crystals. I don't know. It depends. But anyway, I'll see you kids next time. Woo.